welcome to another video, The One Good Road here. Today I wanted to sort of do another podcast kind of style video. As you'll see as the video plays, let me know what you think with the intro. I can change it. It's I can change the music if you don't like it. I really love that kind of music. And I can probably make it shorter if that's not your style either. Um, and let me know what you think of this field of view. I really like it. And podcasts, this sort of style, allow me to make videos like non-stop and I really love to make them like this. It allows me to speak my mind. I have to mention a huge thanks to a guy by the name of Pierre who just donated to me which was just amazing. He donated 90 pounds through PayPal and it's it's amazing. It allowed me to actually get this new accessory which you're able to see the chest mount of, of this GoPro. So huge thanks to Pierre. Thank you. I'm going to have enough money to get to my next paycheck so that's amazing and Thanks for watching, everybody. Like that also allows me to keep going. So I'm gonna shut up and talk about biking, uh, cycling in Perth. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is a little bit different. I'm gonna be testing out this new microphone setup uh, with this camera, the GoPro, because I got this new mount today because I can just about afford it. And uh, I'm very curious to see what the footage will look like later on today. I'm currently riding in a suburb of Perth which is called Midland and I'm on the bike path which goes towards Bassadine I think the name is. Um, and I'm just going to see what the quality is like of the GoPro recording like this. I've never done this sort of sh shooting before and also if the noise of the traffic is too much. Anyway. I thought in this video I might talk about the bike paths in Perth since I'm actually riding on them this very second. Um, so as you can see, this bike path is basically a mini road. Hopefully you can see that. And there are signs giving you uh, like sort of directions on how far uh, places are but they're slightly uh, inaccurate. They're okay. But um, to, explain, to explain it simply, Perth has two main bike routes. You've got the one which goes west to east, which kind of goes from the coast towards the hills, follows the Swan River, um, and then you've got the one which goes north to south, which follows the freeway. Um, and they're basically like, those are the two main highways of the cycling routes in Perth. Now there are the other ones which they're trying to build. They're trying to get one which goes around the Swan River, both sides, from the hills, I think. Uh, and also from the central business district, the CBD. Now Perth is actually not that bad of a city to ride through because of these paths. Um, so it's best to describe it if you're ever coming over here. I mean, I've only been here for... Uh, how long has it been? Like 10 days? So close to two weeks. Um, and the best thing I can describe it as is that the freeways or the main roads, as you can probably see over there, they are just like any American sort of style uh, suburb where it's just but it's a bit sadly disappointing um, and it's not very great for cycling on the main roads here in my opinion um, you can do it I've seen roadies do it but this this path here is much better as you can clearly see hopefully um, it's it's a nice path it's marked mostly in red most of the time, the good ones anyway. Um, and they are a bit patchy because they're still developing. Um, I mean, the problem with it is that it's not dense enough. Um, the, Perth, the, the first paths are labeled as PSP. Those, uh, I think it stands for a principal shared path, I think. Um, and basically it means pedestrians and cyclists can use these paths. 
Now that can be a bit frustrating for some, I do not care, I think it's safer for both of us, and it's still really fast. I don't like it when two pedestrians will, you know, take up the whole lane for some reason. But essentially, it's a mini road, as you can clearly see. It's even got a mini shoulder, I've never seen that before. Look at that, a little, a little shoulder, I don't know if you can see that right there. Um, and of course it still needs to cross over certain sections of the road and the CBD section around the, the financial or central business district is not great. Um, but along the rivers and getting you from A to B and the bigger distances are pretty good. Now this is good because it follows the train track. So now everyone else is going to stop, I can cross over which is perfect and it's turned green anyway so and no traffic's going to come from this direction either that's the nice thing only downside because it follows the railway track and the freeway it's really loud you'll probably hear it any minute now and i probably shouldn't even bother talking there's perth the sign i don't know if you can see that like I said, I'm not sure about this video format. I've never really tried it before, so just let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I think it's great because it allows me to create just loads of different angles and shots. And I'd like to make more stuff like this, but if you guys get bored by it, I'll obviously post other things. It's just at the moment, I don't have access to edit them now. I'm at a different location again. Here we are, Perth, 14 kilometers. Midland, the suburb I just came from, two kilometers. I mean, the paths are not very, like, here's, here's some a suggestion to management here or the development team out here, I mean, if they ever see this. I think that the path should be um, labeled what number of road that it is or give it a name, you know, like, like we do for major highways, they're called like Highway 1 or Highway 101 or um, the N25. You know, there's all these names that we have for roads, um, and that's just the numbers. So you can still get them also named by. That's the downside. It's it is really that's one of the downsides. They need to build like a a wall right there, and that'll stop a lot of the noise. But eh, they don't have the money for that. And it's reasonably flat here. Um, anyway. So, I'll get to the flatness in a minute. So what was I mentioning? Something about the, the name. So, most roads out here in Australia are named. They're not numbered. Like most locals will speak in the names of the roads rather than the numbers, which is weird for me because every time I use Google Maps, first thing I see are the numbers. So, I call a road by its number. That's what I think Americans do anyway. Like I-5, I-10, um, Highway 101, I mean these are all on the west coast, for example. Um, what else? The, and I mean that, that to me would improve the networking, because I mean I have no idea, if I was a brand new local here, I mean, not local, sorry, uh, traveler, tourist, I have no idea where this path goes. I can keep following it, but sometimes it'll just end out, you know, on a suburb road and it's not signposted where the rest of the path goes. What I'd recommend is using your phone as navigation and downloading OpenStreetMaps. Now OpenStreetMaps is an application, I've made a video about it, and basically it allows you to, um, well, it's navigation. I mean, it's quite self-explanatory, but it has a lot of different... Sorry about the train. Yeah, that's... See, it's really loud. Um, but the OpenStreetMaps has a lot more bells and whistles to it. It shows you where those bike paths are. So if you download that one, um, I think on the free version you can change the map system on there, and you change the map to the open cycle map. And that's basically an open source mapping system that cyclists and touring cyclists use. Um, so you can edit it if you want. 
which is nice. So I have to wait even though, yeah, bit of a bummer. There we go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so where were we? Um, so yeah, it's it's just that the tracks are, the tracks on the map, there we go, we were talking about that. Tracks, uh, the routes on the map are really good and you can you can kind of find out what, what where the PSPs are. Um, it sounds weird calling PSP, I think, PlayStation Portable, because I grew up using that console. Um, anyway, the point is that those are like the highways of the cycle paths here. But they look just like the Dutch ones, they're red, they've got this nice red look to them, so you can, it's not so... And if everyone's wearing black, you can still see them a bit easier. Um, it's pretty well signposted, they're smooth. Some of them aren't too tight of corners. You can tell that the transportation department have had to sometimes like develop it in a way that it can uh, fit in certain places. But so far, I think it's pretty good. And Perth's got a lot of potential for good cycleways because I found that Sydney was really bad. Um, south of Sydney there's a nice bike path but that's literally it. Like you can ride through the city sort of okay on this one main route which is recommended for bike routes but it's not like a road on its own. You need to share it with cars and Sydney let me tell you is really bad. Like cycling infrastructure there scary <laughs> really scary for riding um, like I'd rather ride the Nobor so yeah that's kind of like my little video my little review on this sort of path in Perth if you have any questions about riding and cycling in Perth let me know um, the CBD is quite nice it's it's rather small but it still has some some skyscrapers and they're ranging around 100 to 200 meters or so and yeah it's not bad oh there you go there's my turn off so it just abruptly ends if i'm a local i'd know this but I, i'm not a local yet so so midlands down there now i cross the tracks here which they automatically close when a train comes which is good so um but that's pretty much it for this video like subscribe because uh, I just do anything to do with bikes. Any cycling content, I'm making it. Like, I love any videos to do with cycling. Uh, my, late, my latest video explains what I'm up to at the moment. And I'd love to make some more films for you guys, but I just don't have access to that at the moment. But we don't know what the future will bring. And um, stay tuned for more cycling videos. Alright, see you guys in the next video. Hope this bloody well worked.